organized by knowledge and technology transfer offices of the University of Maribor and the University of Ljubljana. In collaboration with our industry partners and supporters from the innovation community. The main partner of the event is Novartis in Slovenia. Also, the festival would not have been possible without the support of the Republic of Slovenia and the European Union under the European Regional Development Funds. In this parallel session, we will give a snapshot of competences, innovative projects, and good collaborative practices in the field of data engineering. Uh, joining us will be eight speakers presenting their cases and fields of expertise. Mateusz Pustisek, Luka Mali, Mojca Vok, Muhammad Turkanovic, Domen Mongus, Matyash Juric, Martin Puchar, and Luka Banovic. Each speaker will have a three minutes long presentation following three minutes for questions and comments. The exception is the first speaker, Mateusz Pustisek, who will have six minutes for questions and comments because he will not be able to participate in the discussion at the end of the section. I'm going to kindly notify you when you have reached the time limit. In the end, our moderator, Yuli Bozic, will encourage us to have an open dialogue on what are the future developments, trends, and how to join forces. Throughout the event, we encourage you to keep your camera on so we can see each other. Before we take off, let's uh, go over the technical stuff and get now our cocktail. Uh, first, if you, I ask you to change your view to gallery view, side by side gallery, so we will be able to see each other. Then go, then go to view options and choose side by side mode. You will be able to change the size of presentation as well. Also, please rename your name if it's not correct, uh, so we know what to call you. Here is a picture on how to do it. We encourage you to ask questions. During the presentation, use the Zoom chat for that and please stay muted. After presentations, you can also raise your Zoom hands and speak directly. Also a reminder to all our speakers and attendees, you are invited to use the Unimides team backgrounds to you on the link uh, in the chat. Not to steal any more of the pre precious time we have, I'm now happy to present uh, our moderator, Yuli Bozic. Yuli is the technology sales director and country leader at the Oracle Slovenia. He is a visionary sales leader with the ability to disrupt the status quo by creating uh, new business models. Distinguished by years of experience and achievements in the information and communications technologies and long-standing experience in marketing, sales, and management. He spent countless hours mentoring, coaching, and helping start startups and young entrepreneurs on the path of the change and success. Yuli, please, the stage is yours. Hello, Marian. Hello, everyone. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, nice uh, intro. So, uh, yeah, I will be guiding uh, today and uh, moderating uh, these uh, nice speakers we have today and nice topics, basically, from IoT, uh, 5G, digital. I was working in IBM for many years. Uh, uh, also, the last years uh, from 2013, 16, I was uh, 
general manager of IBM Slovenia. Then I went to BTC and I was responsible for uh, digital transformation and innovation uh, on the board level. And then I got the invitation from Oracle and I'm uh, now uh, leading the Slovenian office of Oracle uh, Slovenia. So uh, really glad to be here. Uh, and uh, I would be now, let's say, introducing the, the first speaker. The first speaker we have is Mateusz, Mateusz Pustyszek. He is assistant professor, uh, laboratory of tele telecommunication, faculty of electrical engineering in University of Ljubljana. So Mateusz, uh, the stage is yours. Thanks a lot, Yuli. Uh, hello, everybody. Just let me share my screen so that you see the presentation as well. Um, Okay, uh, I suppose you see my my presentation now, do you? Yeah, we can see the presentation. Perfect, Bye. so, okay, let me start. So as, as mentioned in the introduction, uh, we, we definitely discuss a hot topic in the field of um, emerging technologies today. In fact, it has been quite some time now since we started um, exploring possibilities of emerging blockchain technologies in the field of IoT. And um, this might not be um, an ob such an obvious use of blockchain technologies as uh, probably the cryptocurrencies are. But in the last two years, especially since 2018 and on, um, there has been a lot of st uh, strong business related research how to um, implement and apply blockchain technology or to be even a bit more general, the distributed ledger technology in the field of IoT. Um, the problems we were facing two years ago or, or three years ago uh, was that there were many unrealistic expectations put to the blockchain technology uh, related to IoT. In fact, it was considered, as you can see from this um, statement here um, uh, about the missing link and so on, uh, that actually it's a, a, rem a remedy for all or nearly all the problems that IoT might have. So this, of course, is not true. And I think that one of the reasons for this uh, misunderstanding is that um, uh, distributed systems, which blockchain definitely is, are not necessarily decentralized. So, of course, blockchain technologies provide decentralized services as well. The IoT is distributed, but it's still very much centralized. I mean, in terms of billions of IoT devices, of course, distribution is clear, but even the uh, cloud backend, the, the single point servers are no longer distributed because you have technologies which enable uh, virtualization and distribution of of uh, operating system, of platforms, of applications, or even individual functions among different servers, different data centers, or even different continents. And uh, that what where IoT ends, despite being distributed, IoT is not a decentralized system. So we have centralized entities that provide services and provide trust into the services. And um, to find the appropriate role of blockchain technology for the IoT, we have to look at what blockchain can do best. And this is providing the trustless trust. So we can create trustworthy decentralized applications, which enable autonomous machine to machine transaction and run of and, and, and trustworthy run of uh, smart contract code in the blockchain. So that is where the application of blockchain technology could do best for the IoT. So 
scalability, performance, and, and uh, criteria alike, they are much better met in the IoT with other means like edge computing, virtualization, and so on. So that is not where blockchain should be applied successfully, at least in my opinion. So if we besides uh, wisely select the use cases for blockchain in IoT, and in my opinion, two hot areas are IoT device management that includes uh, authorization and authentication of IoT devices, and uh, IoT as a service. So X in this formula is very general, so it can be robotics or, or whatever. So many different uh, application areas exist, but where the things are starting becoming services. So that's where the IoT and blockchain could be merged together into very successful solutions. So in terms of the state of the art and what we actually do in our research and development. So uh, a lot of movement is going on um, in uh, related to the blockchain networks. Uh, we have apart from the public blockchain networks that we know very well of, like Bitcoin network and public Ethereum network. A lot of research is put onto private and consortium networks where trade-off between performance and security can be made, uh, including providing performance uh, indicators of the blockchain network that by far superior the ones that we know from the public networks. The next, the next uh, point of interest are the atomic swap, where you can actually combine um, different blockchain networks in uh, united trustful solutions. So this could be public and private networks using the same technology, like uh, the public Ethereum network and some private networks based on the Ethereum technology, or even diverse uh, blockchain technology where Your speaker, you can merge transactions among them. We are short in time. Yes, I, I, I will finalize it. Uh, and the state channels, which are another mechanism to increase the security. So um, the second point are uh, in IoT are the constraint devices, how to attach them to blockchain infrastructure. And the third one are decentralized applications especially the smart contract security. So these are the items where we focus the most of our recent research activities um, at, at the moment. And till now, we had um, several proofs of concepts in, in this area, the IoT and blockchain, and of course made thorough background research on viable um, distributed ladder technologies for the IoT. So uh, this is um, briefly the state of the art, which also concludes uh, my presentation part. And uh, I'm open for the questions now. Thank you. Mateusz, thank you very much. Very interesting uh, what you are doing, uh, you and your team. So uh, my question would be then, uh, so, okay, you said uh, this scalability and speed should not be a problem combining these uh, blockchain and IoT devices? Uh, you, well, that, that's true, at least to some extent. Of course, if we consider public blockchain networks, then they are not scalable enough for the IoT applications. But we can um, get much, much better performance in terms of transaction latency and transaction throughput if we organize private and consortium networks. We, of course, still don't reach the figures uh, that you would find in, let's say, uh, relational database or systems alike. So uh, still, the cloud has to be there and has its, its definite role. But um, nevertheless, we can reach the performance that is definitely good enough for certain IoT-related blockchain applications not for, for anyone. So for example, um, bulk storage of IoT data, I don't see a point why one would do that with blockchain. We have better means to do that, even trusted ones. But where we want to enable the uh, autonomous machine negotiations in decentralized applications through smart contracts and so on, 
then the performance can be trimmed to be uh, good enough. Mm -hmm. Super, thank you very much. And I bet you have some uh, already uh, developed use cases, but uh, let us move on and we can touch it uh, later on at the, at the end. So thank you very much, uh, Mateusz. Thank you as well, goodbye. Great presentation. And uh, now we go to the next uh, speaker, uh, Luca Mali. He's the head of market, uh, market lab, faculty of electrical engineering uh, in University of uh, Ljubljana. So Luca, please. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Just a second. Okay. Um, so, Yuli, thank you for the introduction. Um, today, I would like to share with you um, the new concepts uh, of teaching and innovating uh, at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering. So, um, at uh, Faculty of uh, uh, Maker Lab was actually founded seven years ago, uh, where we actually founded the first open lab at the University of Ljubljana where interdisciplinary teams of students, uh, researchers, and potential users uh, or companies meet and, collabor <coughs> and collaborate on the innovative ideas. Um, so in Maker Lab Ljubljana, we are focusing on the next tech revolution, uh, the Internet of Things. So the merge of the microelectronics, advanced communication technologies, big data and artificial intelligence enables us to create uh, never seen a new, never seen before uh, solutions. Uh, we prepared a short video so you could uh, better understand how open university looks like. And uh, I like to uh, play it uh, uh, for you. Maker Ljubljana is a dedicated open lab at the University of Ljubljana that provides access to all the tools and knowledge students need to bring their coding, crafting and other skills to life. In the Maker Lab Ljubljana, we are mainly focusing on the development of the innovative IoT products and solutions. In the last year alone, we have hosted more than 300 participants at the free of charge classes, helped more than 100 makers at their projects, and co organized events like Mini Maker Fair Ljubljana. Hi, I'm Nicola. I'm working here on a charging station prototype using blockchain. And working in Maker Lab is really helpful for this kind of project. We are tougher, student team with a goal to improve everyday work of farmers and wine growers. We are developing an electrical field robot that will help farmers with monitoring the plants, applying fertilizer and pesticides, and also help with everyday chores. So more than 100 projects are created yearly with the help of the Maker Lab community. He represented the smart environmental station, COVID distancing monitoring system, smart face mask, and others. At the end, I'd like uh, to invite you to visit us uh, so we could start to innovate together. Um, stay safe and enjoy the rest of the conference.
Okay, uh, Luca, thank you. Great. Uh, I always like that uh, when we have those labs, you know, and you build an ecosystem around and uh, uh, you collaborate and uh, try to make uh, impact on the, let's say, outside world. Uh, for example, as you mentioned, this environment, uh, which is now more and more important. Uh, so tell me, um, uh, are you, who is, uh, who is ordering the, the, the solutions? You get it from outside or you have, uh, let's say, you collaborate with the companies outside or? Uh... Yes, of course, we are, we are mainly collaborating with, with the companies uh, or uh, also startups. Uh, we cover a special uh, field in between uh, the, 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 the basic research and uh, 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 we are focusing more the, on the applicable research and where stu especially students can help. Uh, so, but but when, when the, there is a lack of knowledge that students have, then uh, more than 300 uh, uh, researchers at the, at the faculty can help and, and jump in on the project. So basically we're fo focusing on the smaller innovative projects from the companies, individuals, and also, um, uh, so industry basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. Super. Super, great. Are you uh, also collaborating with, uh, let's say, uh, outside Slovenia on, on some projects or? Uh... Uh, yeah, we, we have a, a collaboration mainly with, with, the, with the similar uh, labs, uh, open labs uh, mm -hmm. on, on various uh, uh, international projects. And mm -hmm. we especially uh, compete on the, on the international level with, with the projects, uh, as you saw, autonomous uh, robots and so on. And we are winning uh, high prizes on the international level uh, with, with, with those projects. Yeah. Great, congratulations! Thank you, thank you, Luca. Uh, okay, let's thank move you. on. So the next speaker is uh, Moitza Vok. Uh, she is assistant professor at University of Ljubljana. So uh, Moitza, let's go. Yeah, thank you, thank you for the introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, let me just share my screen like this. Okay, I hope you can see the slide. Um, so hi everyone. Um, well, I will be starting from the topic that I think was sort of the, the, the thread line of today's discussions also at the, the beginning of the event. So what is the value of data and where is the data taking us? And my presentation for today is trying to approach um, the value of data and how data is transforming the industry from the communications perspective. I'll be talking a little bit about business critical services and how the verticalization is taking place from the perspective of communications and then, of course, where data science comes into that. Um, so um, what I would like to, first of all, say is that, of course, um, I think we've all heard of 5G. Uh, this is very hard not to not to talk about these days. Um, and the fact of the matter is that uh, what we're seeing today globally is that uh, the telecommunications industry, especially the mobile technologies, are starting to have a bigger and bigger impact on how nearly any industry out there is going to function in the future. So we're talking about digital transformation, which to the better part is reliant on how the communications are working, um, and of course, this represents no, not only a lot of technical challenges, but, all, but also a huge business opportunity. Um, I've pasted here a couple of numbers. There's a lot of different projections out there, different numbers of what is the whole, the, the, the global economic value or the impact in, in terms of business of having this transformation today. Um, and of course, as you can see, it's um, in this case, 13 trillion American dollars. The numbers are huge. But what's even more important is on the right hand side, um, there's only a couple of examples. The fact is that the digital transformation and sort of the impact that the mobile industry is starting to create um, on, on our verticals in different, um, uh, let's say, in different fields of knowledge and different fields of industry, it's practically impacting all fields of science it's impacting all fields of industry and this is what is the true um, opportunity out there and of course also the challenge and not only technically but also in terms of who's going to be partnering with whom and who's going to be, be doing business with whom um, 
Now, why 5G? There is a lot of debate out there, um, a lot of, let's say, skepticism also. Um, the true value of 5G compared to any other generation before that is that this is not yet another, let's say, just the technology field, just technology to make the communications work, but it's sort of an umbrella that brings together a lot of different um, scientific fields and different technologies, for example, extended reality, cloud technologies, artificial intelligence, big data, IoT. There's a whole plethora of technologies that are having an important role within the 5G. And the idea of this is basically to deliver a platform or an ecosystem that's capable of responding to the needs of the verticals. This is why 5G has this potential. And this is also why um, we're saying that this is going to be the transformative element of how the technologies are going to impact the vertical sectors in this respect. Uh, one important element here is that, of course, 5G is um, anything, I mean, it, it's very far away from being just a communications technology because data science um, has a huge role. And in fact, 5G is designed to host a platform where um, the data science and business that comes with that will be able to um, reside and, of course, then also offer new business models, new partnerships, and, of course, new services for the end users. Now, the true challenge um, when we try to do this kind of transformation is um, a question of how able are we to address the needs of each specific sector. So each sector comes with um, a range of uh, very specific requirements, very specific expectations, uh, very specific needs. And they have a lot of legacy technology or proprietary, proprietary technology that have been serving to a good point up until now. Um, and now on the other hand, what we have is 5G and a whole lot of um, advanced technologies that have jointly the capability to respond to those needs. But there's a huge challenge that comes with it because um, what you need to have is a good understanding of the vertical specifics as well as, as, well as good understanding of how the technology works and what it can offer. Um, our approach in this respect is to always begin from the verticals and uh, understand their needs and involve the stakeholders of those verticals into the co-creation and co-design uh, cycle so that we can actually build from what is needed, from what is expected, and then make use the most out of the technologies and the capabilities of 5G and all the rest of technologies are, um, are delivering for each of those specific verticals. Um, I will just show a, a snapshot of a couple of um, industries that we are part of. Um, so it's uh, extended virtual and augmented reality. Uh, we work a lot with stakeholders in public safety. We work a lot with um, the media and entertainment sector. Uh, we are active in IoT. You've seen from um, my two colleagues, uh, Mateusz and Luca, that we're active also um, in innovation. We're active in um, data science in agriculture. So there's a whole lot of, um, let's say, long-standing cooperation that we cultivate um, in different sectors. And today we've come to a point where we can actually sort of um, make use of this platform and make use of all the um, established cooperations and the technological playgrounds that we've built because this now gives us the opportunity to work with the stakeholders to have a good knowledge of what they need. And then this basically then creates the opportunity for us to be able to design um, how 5G is going to help them, how 5G is going to fit uh, within each of those verticals and what kind of features and what kind of services we're able to deliver. Um, and as I, I said at the beginning, so this is not just about delivering communications because communications in many respects are becoming business critical or in some cases even mission critical. So this is a lot about the reliability of the technology that we're able to build and also the reliability and the value of, of the data that, that we're hosting on this kind of communication system. Um, so this, I think, is a huge challenge. It's a huge opportunity and the core of this is to have a really good dialogue with the stakeholders because um, if we understand what they need, we have practically um, limitless choice of technology. Yeah, speaker, that we can actually... uh, sorry, but um, the is running. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope we're going to have 
a little bit of a debate at the end, but you're welcome to get in touch anytime and just um, uh, approach us and let us know if you have any additional questions. Thank you. Wojca, thank you very much. Uh, amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, so basically um, you see uh, 5G as an uh, enabler for the basically all industries. And uh, we are talking about if before uh, and now we have like B2C that uh, it's just about communication and faster, faster communication, uh, the 5G will actually bring for all the industries uh, collaboration between those industries like uh, smart factories, smart, uh, smart cities and, and, and so on. So you see it as an, uh, really a game changer uh, in, the, in the industry. Yeah, actually um, what we're seeing here is not so much a revolution in the technology itself. It's rather that for the first time we have an ecosystem that, that has the ability and that has been built from scratch to be able to make use of all those different kinds of technologies because up until this point, we have this fragmented to a certain point. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that easy to, to you know, just combine and make use of two separate technologies. But at this, in this case, in 5G, this was sort of the prerequisite that was designed from the beginning to have this ability to make the best out of the technologies that are out there. Um, and yeah, I think, I mean, 5G in, in, in my mind is not only the technology it, and it's not only the communications, it's the ability of making use of all those technologies at once um, to be able to respond to the, to the needs that various sectors have. And the fact is that up until this point, those sectors had very specific needs that commercial communication technologies were not able to respond to. Um, and what's really exciting is that this is not just about the technology because um, this opportunity now is sort of um, rearranging the partnerships and the business behind that. So we're, we don't know who's going to be working with whom and what opportunities are out there. And I think this is one of the core values of 5G. Exactly. Super. Great. So putting it uh, all together from the technology point of view and ecosystem, uh, uh, in, 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 in one, uh, one way. Super. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Moitza. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so let's move to uh, next uh, speaker. We have uh, Muhammad Turkanovic. Uh, he's head of uh, UM Digital Innovation Hub, head of Blockchain Hub, uh, in Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Computer Science and Informatics at University of Maribor. So, amazing title. Mohamed, uh, the stage is yours. Thank you. I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, just to set up my stopwatch for three minutes. <laughs> Okay, so uh, thank you very much for hosting me. Uh, I'm glad to be uh, with all of the other uh, excellent researchers on this topic. So I'm just gonna try to explain and in short uh, time show what we at our blockchain lab are actually uh, doing. I will focus on the topics of, of course, the distributed and decentralized data engineering. So as said, we are from the University of uh, Maribor, Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at the Institute of Informatics. Uh, so what our, uh, what we are at the Blockchain Laboratory, uh, it's an unofficial laboratory and we are a multidisciplinary team of researchers, developers and consultants for uh, which work on the uh, topic of researching distributed and decentralized technologies on various domains. Uh, and I will just try to explain what we are doing through some projects that we are involved in. Uh, one of those is, for example, the EduCTX platform, which was uh, a Slovene, Slovene uh, awarded best computer science and informatics platform in 2019. It's a distributed decentralized uh, platform which stores, enables storing of digital certificates of students or any kind of digital certificates on a distributed ledger technology. It's based on a distributed and a consortium network between a lot of universities from Czech Republic, uh, Germany, Croatia, and Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, we 
also are still developing on with this technology. Uh, one of the projects we also had is the ECTA. It's a globally, it's a global employability distributed ledger platform, which enables actually uh, project-based collaboration and also exchange of uh, and payment of um, payment of services in 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 a global manner. We have also worked with a Maribor company uh, on employing or designing some services for uh, ensuring uh, microservices like uh, micro uh, micro insurance uh, uh, payments with, uh, for, for example, when traveling with uh, airplanes. Uh, we have also developed a prototype where we are using the IOTA platform, which is also specialized for the uh, high processing of uh, IoT data. We have a setup at our uh, laboratory in our university where we are collecting different uh, sensor data, pushing it towards the IOTA platform and also having a lot of uh, business uh, logic behind that. Uh, then we have also multiple uh, projects like, for example, the Digital Europe for All project is an H2020 project where we are collaborating with various ministries and companies from the European Union. What we are doing here is uh, actually enforcing and trying to enforce the usage of blockchain ledger, uh, which is the data layer. Uh, and upon that, we are trying to uh, introduce the self sovereign identity principle, where we are actually uh, introducing and piloting uh, student mobility. So when students travel to, through various countries in the European Union, they will be able to actually apply for student grants and study abroad by using self sovereign identity based verifiable credentials. And these also include uh, enterprise agents, uh, edge agents, etc. So this is a piloting project on this point. Um, then we have a security, cybersecurity project, Concordia, where we are also uh, trying to evolve and try to think about the security of blockchain technology in it. Uh, also, we are proud that we are the only Slovene, uh, also let's say the official Slovene holder of the European Blockchain Service Infrastructure uh, Network node. So we are at our laboratory hosting the Slovenian EPSI node. We have also patented uh, EPO patent on uh, using blockchain technology for storing personal data on blockchain, even though if it's on a public ledger and et cetera, et cetera. We have a lot of projects uh, involved on this and we are proud of this. But besides of the project, projects, we are also normally publishing a lot of uh, research papers. Until now, in these four or five years, we have more than 21 uh, scientific articles, 11 professional articles. We are editing journals on the topic of um, blockchain technology, etc. So uh, that's it. What we are also trying to do is we explore and work with a lot of uh, open source projects like the Hyperledger Fabric, IOTA, Hyperledger Base, Ethereum, Iroha, Aries, etc. We have also contributed some of the codes to Hyperledger, Iroha, etc. So uh, we try to be involved in all of these topics. But uh, not to forget, we are at the Institute of Informatics, where we are also very, very specialized on the data technologies, also distributed data technologies. And that's why we can and work also with uh, distributed databases like Mongo, uh, Kafka, New SQL, Vault DB, Neo4j, and etc. So these are all the topics that we work on. I'm already past my three minutes at all. I, I had my stopwatch. So uh, for possible questions, uh, I'm free to talk about this later on. Mohamed, uh, great, amazing. So um, yeah, you are, uh, I see um, you are very much involved with um, a lot of um, European uh, like H2020 uh, tenders and uh, working on the concrete uh, project. So uh, how you would uh, compare Slovenia to, to, to other countries? Uh, are we ahead of or lacking behind or where we are with with uh, with those uh, project and uh, making those projects, uh, let's say, a real cases behind. I would say uh, the Slovenians as citizens and companies, SMEs, they are really far ahead. Uh, where we are lacking is the governmental and uh, governmental layer, because what we see in these H20 pro H2020 project is that other companies like Holland, Spain, etc., they have a lot of support uh, from their governmental infrastructures and services, which 
also use these technologies more uh, actively. They also go from this more top-down approach. In Slovenia, we are really focused on this bottom-up approach where a lot of us innovators are really doing some things and we then hope maybe that uh, the, the, the country and the government and the ministries will maybe catch up and also use this technology. So we have this flip situation uh, in Slovenia mm -hmm. as it is, but we are far ahead uh, what's on the scientific and professional case. So by being far ahead, uh, it's a great potential for us, but okay, lacking the, get the government support, not, not in terms of financials, then uh, of, uh, let's say, policies and uh, support, like uh, being user of, of it, you know, so like, you see it like that? Of course, yeah, more on that point. When we have these meetings, for example, uh, the, other, the other partners, they are joined with their ministries or their ministries are fully engaged in uh, using these technologies where uh, at our space, we uh, are forcing technology, we are researching, etc. But uh, the ministries, they uh, even they, I'm not going to say they, don't, they do not want it, but I guess they don't have much time and, and uh, this proactive uh, vision that they also try to help us and to engage themselves more into the research part. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, lack of understanding, yeah. Of course. So, yeah. Uh, thank you, Mohamed, for, uh, for that. Uh, so, let's move on. We have Matthias, uh, no, uh, sorry, we have Domen Mongus. Uh, is uh, Domen here? Hello, hello, I'm here. Oh, great. So, Domen, hi. Hi, okay. hi. Let's start with you. So, uh, sorry, uh, just uh, I will introduce yourself. So, uh, Domini is from Institute of Computer Science, Faculty of, of uh, Electrical Engineering, uh, Computer Science and Informatics at the University of Maribor. So, Domen, let's go. Uh, thank you. Let me just share my screen. Okay, um, hello everyone. Uh, as mentioned, I'm Domen Mongus. I come from Game Lab at University of Maribor. Uh, here we are, we are working quite a lot with environmental intelligence and we are trying to, uh, to address the environmental intelligence um, uh, from, 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 from three key aspects of sustainability, let's say it like that. Uh, this includes environmental aspects, uh, economical aspects, and also the social aspects of the in, in, in environment. Uh, obviously, uh, data fusion is at the core of the, of the developments here, where uh, we are reaching over the all key, let's say, levels of data data fusion at one level bringing the data together overlying it and aligning and aligning it in in space and time in order to assess the feature uh, the features of objects in the in the environment interlinking these features of objects together in order to achieve a situation assessment and recognitions of situations uh, Supplemented with with with, with predictive uh, predictive analytics in order to achieve like true perspective analytics from the sustainable environmental point of of view. Obviously, this relates heavily to uh, to the digital twins, which we understand as digital replicas of living or non-living uh, or, or entities. Let's say. It. Um, however, here we are primarily trying to, 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 to reach beyond the state of the art, like bringing digital twins outside of this famous industry 4.0 environment uh, into the real world environment, including uh, living organisms, uh, which are highly complex and uh, such kind of advanced environmental intelligence could, could, uh, could, 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 could could essentially provide the monitoring, uh, the monitoring capacity of living world, uh, in order to achieve the diagnostics of 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 of, of, of living world in a virtual world. Try to produce some prognostics algorithms of top, of of top of that, ranging from from regressions to environmental simulations and finally implementations of optimizations back into the into the real world. From um, 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 in order not to be so 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 abstract, I will just mention briefly some of the uh, some of the applications that that, that we are developed 
developing currently. Uh, amongst more interesting ones are, for example, uh, um, car in infotainment systems uh, where, we, where we are capable of bringing the the real world environment of a car into the into the into the car and and then uh, b building for example uh, uh, in car games uh, which are designed according to the real world environment of the car where it, where the car is driving uh, we are also building for example a, a, a digital twin of agricultural land uh, capable of predicting uh, and optimizing greenhouse gas emissions and crop production based on the based on the activities of the farmers and so on and uh, finally for example uh, medical applications where we are building a digital twin of a, of a muscular system capable of predicting the injury before the injury actually happens uh, based on the environmental uh, parameters like uh, temperature and uh, humidity in the air and also the the, the land by which the uh, the um, user is traveling so yeah that's it from my side i hope i wasn't too long okay yeah it wasn't too long thank you Doman. um yeah uh okay the question uh, so basically uh, i see you are you are uh, dealing with a lot of uh, real project um, companies uh, and uh, you know trying to 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 impact the uh, how the, the, the data and uh, this um, uh, communication can, uh, can provide added value. So for example, uh, for this in, in uh, mobility, uh, we know that, okay, uh, autonomous driving and uh, so what we will do with, with all free time in, in the car, you know, and uh, this uh, infotainment systems uh, for that. Now, do you see uh, the problem with this standardization that, uh, you have a lot of different platforms and uh, you know each of the vendors are doing it uh, by themselves or or do you see that um, it will merge together in uh, in one platform and uh, uh, those things can be related i mean obviously sooner or later it will be merged into a single platform a single standard for car to i guess you are talking about car car to uh, to asset communication yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah obviously sooner or later it will have to uh, have to integrate uh, into a single platform because uh, the market will force everyone in the uh, all the all the stakeholders to to come to a, some kind of an uh, an agreement, uh, but I guess we are still in the development stage, and and it'll pass some time, and we can play around <laughs> for yeah. for a couple of years trying out different things. I guess. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, so let's move on. Um, the next speaker is uh, Matthias Juric. Uh, he's professor at the uh, Faculty of Computer and Information Science in the University of Ljubljana. So, Matthias. Thank you very hey, much. Hey, hi. Hello. Uh, thank you. Uh, today, I would like to talk with you about digital transformation. Um, and uh, as we all know, digital transformation is quite an important topic. Uh, uh, the, 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 the companies uh, and other organizations throughout different businesses are shifting towards digital uh, 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 and introducing digital business models, uh, restructuring the way how they work, uh, how they address the customers, uh, what products and services they offer. And um, we at our laboratory for information system integration, uh, we focus on the research of several aspects of digital transformation, particularly those which are related with the development of software uh, for, digital, for different digital applications. And um, um the, the the development of software for for the digital uh, so to say uh, relates to to different aspects uh, it relates to the development of the front end which includes web mobile and other user interfaces uh, it relates to the um, 
software itself, which is um, which is highly connected with the cloud computing. Um, it relates to the integration with social networks, with Internet of Things, uh, with big data. Um, on the other end, it also relates to the business process automation um, uh, and to the development of services and APIs. Uh, on top of it, uh, an important topic is also the integration between all these layers uh, and particularly the integration with um, uh, with backend systems uh, of each individual company or organization. Uh, and today I would particularly like to talk with you about um, opportunities in, in the uh, software development aspects of digital transformation. Uh, and in our laboratory, we do quite a lot of research work. Um, but we are also involved in several projects. Uh, these are uh, European projects uh, funded by Ho uh, Horizon 2020. These are some national research projects, but we also work quite heavily with companies, particularly with Slovenian companies, where we help them uh, to make the transition to digital uh, faster, smoother, and uh, uh, with less mistakes. Um, what I would like to talk with you today are basically two different fields where we uh, do research. Um, one are the software architectures for digital transformation. And uh, as we probably all know, uh, the software uh, for supporting digital business has to follow some new rules, how it is designed and how it, it's developed. Um, what we are talking about uh, are basically cloud native architectures uh, and our research is focused on how to develop uh, a software that can support uh, digital business uh, and how to develop it in such a way that it is um, uh, that that it can execute in cloud environments and take advantage of all the benefits of the cloud environments. And as mentioned, the cloud native development is related to microservice architecture, uh, where we have done quite a lot of research in recent years. Um, it is not only about how to design and develop microservices. Uh, it, the research also focuses on how to modernize existing um, software and applications. But um, we have particularly focused on some interesting topics um, for example, uh, how to scale the applications uh, in an elastic and dynamic way, um, how to enable a parallel development of complex applications where each application um, is broken down into several microservices. And those microservices are then developed by uh, separate teams in parallel, uh, which brings some interesting questions such as for example uh, do all those teams need to wait and synchronize before they can deploy a specific application or can each microservice be deployed on its own uh, without implications for other microservices uh, how to build uh, fault tolerant and resilient architectures which will allow this and so on uh, in addition to, to, to research work, we apply those um, foundings and this knowledge to, to, to some specific projects. For example, uh, we have recently uh, finished a large European project from energy sector. It's called Flexitiency. And the, the topic of this project was um, uh, how to uh, collect the data from uh, smart meters and how to monitor the electrical network, the electrical grid in real time. Uh, and well, our, our role here has been to uh, develop the software architectures which will allow this. Uh, in addition to, to, to those and several other projects, also with Slovenian companies, we are also contributing to an open source project um, for a microservice framework uh, called Cumulus EE. Uh, 
and we are actually not dealing with microservices only but uh, we are focusing on serverless architectures and different other aspects um, the other topic that i would like to talk with you is customer engagement customer engagement is also a very important topic of digital transformation and one that is often well uh, not addressed as uh, 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 as heavily as it would be necessary and customer engagement is about uh, gathering the data about the customers which use the digital channels uh, it, it's actually a huge topic and our lab uh, is doing some interesting research related to mobile devices uh, we are developing dear, dear speaker, we are a bit short in time yeah, I, I will, I will uh, uh, conclude now. We are developing frameworks which allow us to, to gather some in interesting information about the customer from their mobile devices, uh, including uh, authentication and authorization using a mobile device, uh, 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 monitoring the activities and so on. Uh, and well, uh, all those topics uh, um, provide some new uh, insights into how digital transformation projects can be uh, uh, can be carried out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matthias. Um, very interesting. Um, I know you are uh, helping with digital transformation. Uh, you have helped many companies already in Slovenia and, uh, and abroad. Uh, so obviously you, you design a, a blueprint uh, or let's say the, the solution, the path, how, how the clients uh, would move from, let's say, uh, in, into, into new, new world, new digitalization and improve their processes and, uh, and business. Um, how would you, how would you uh, see the, the customer are really coping with that dual transformation. On one side, they need to, to cope with their core business. And in parallel, they need to, to move into, uh, to, to see what are the, the new business models, what are the what are new positioning uh, of, the, of the company. So how would you evaluate um, in, in Slovenia that the clients are ready for, for, for it? Well, um, according to my experience, uh, and not only my, my experience, the digital transformation projects are difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, not only the technical part, but also the business part is very difficult. So basically, how to move forward in the digital and uh, keep the existing business model that's working and how to, how to bring enough disruption and enough innovation, this is really difficult. But... Um, after, uh, after the, 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 the companies have set up their digital transformation strategies, there is another really, really big obstacle. This is the execution ability to develop all the required software to support uh, the new digital initiatives, the, the, the new digital channels and models. And this is then the second uh, uh, big obstacle where, where most companies, well, uh, where most companies uh, have difficulties to deal with. I, I want to say that they fail, but they have difficulties to deal with. And this second step is a particular topic where we can help um, customers, where we actually help customers and we help them uh, to set up all the development processes, to define the architecture, to, to, to make the right uh, decisions and well, to, 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 to plan the the agile development, DevOps, and everything which mm -hmm. is related to digital transformation, uh, mm -hmm. to make them succeed with the implementation of, of all the required software building blocks and integration of those building blocks to the backend systems. Mm -hmm. So uh, you would say it's a, it's a long process and uh, you need a strategy. Uh, in, in, in not just in paper, but let's say from paper and strong support from the management board to enforce the, the strategy down and uh, many, many aspects of uh, not just uh, the, in, in the technology field, but also on the uh, cultural uh, uh, way that uh, people need to, to change and accept, and accept this uh, change. So we, we'll, be, we'll be touching that later on. So thank you, thank you, Matthias. Um, so let's go to our thank next speaker. Thank you very speaker. much. Yeah, so next speaker is Martin Puchar, head of R&D at IGEA.
company. So, uh, Martin? Yeah, hello. hello. Uh, thank you for your invitation. I'll try to... Uh, share my screen. Just a moment. I hope you all see my screen now. <clears throat> So I'll try to uh, briefly explain uh, the, the good practice of uh, cooperation between, let's say, industry and research sector with uh, our company GEA and uh, Gamma Laboratory presented uh, the speaker before, so Dr. Mongos. Uh, <clears throat> first, maybe a few words about our uh, company. We are uh, a GIS company specialized uh, uh, for a special land catastrophe uh, information system. Uh, uh, working in, uh, uh, especially in the Southeast European, European region, so in Slovenia, Croatia, Macedonia, and Serbia. We are also uh, working in smart cities and other smart related topics, uh, road management, so and so on. Uh, we are very well, very well involved in the creation of national expected data infrastructure, where standards are very important for us, especially European uh, standard or uh, inspired directive, uh, also ISO standard, OGC, Fiverr, and so on. Uh, and if we are using mainly uh, our uh, our development uh, is based on open source technology stack, uh, uh, so. Uh, 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 we use, uh, we use uh, uh, let's say, our solutions in, in, in different environments, but with the same with the same platform. So, what our challenges uh, related with research development are? Uh, we are in a, in a field of GIS, uh, and we are sometimes uh, joking about uh, big, uh, let's say, worldwide companies. Uh, and we say they are all GIS companies, like Google. Uh, uh, Uber and recently we we, we can see uh, CNN television uh, uh, explaining uh, American uh, uh, voting uh, via 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 it's, let's say nice map on television. So this technology is used uh, very more often and widely, and is also very quickly developed. So sometimes we said we, we have developed a new product and its technology is already outdated. A new version of uh, products and uh, basic technology are, is available already. Uh, new standards uh, arise, uh, new concepts. Let's say some, some years ago we have discussed about CAT and GIS uh, uh, differences and uh, try to combine these two topics. Uh, nowadays we are discussing and try to combine GIS and BM, building information modeling together. Uh, and of course, uh, there are new concepts. Uh, some of uh, colleagues already discussed about it: digitalization, smart uh, smart things, uh, artificial intelligence, ELT, blockchain, and so on. So we always uh, think: uh, should we? We know we must follow the development. We must should we, should we be engaged? And can we be? We set trends. We are asking ourselves, and the answer is yes. But we need the cooperation with the research. Uh, 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 sector, uh, otherwise you are not capable to uh, to do all these things. So with um, uh, GEMA laboratory, we have, uh, let's say, long-term cooperation. I think it's from 2007 on. Uh, the, the main uh, prerequisite for this section cooperation is um, some kind of unique model of uh, GEMA laboratory. They have 15 to 20 or even more uh, researchers they are packed into smaller groups, and these groups, each group is dedicated for a particular company. And in this case, let's say four to five researchers uh, are working with our company almost all the time. Uh, they are uh, they are uh, they are being involved in the development uh, or update of the our development frameworks. So it means uh, to develop add-ons, improvement of open source frameworks or to develop uh, specialized solutions for intensive graphical location data processing, which they are very well specialized. So to, let's say, in the case, maintaining a large amount of location data, 3D processing, uh, let's say, other, uh, other topics, uh, image processing, satellite data processing, machine learning in, this, in these topics. And of course, they are uh, involved also, also in development of our uh, final products. Uh, uh, 
the, the, the partnership, we understand that we are partners. Also, uh, <clears throat> also it's very important in, uh, the, in the search, in the research pro development project, like pilot demonstration project, uh, project founded by, by IRSC, uh, Horizon 2020 project uh, program. <clears throat> in, in, in we are we are more um, we are uh, let's say cooperating all phases of this project preparation, administration, uh, development, deployment, and so on. Uh, as I said, we also always working as a partner, no matter what formal position each each partner has in in uh, in, uh, in each project. Um, to finalize, uh, uh, the, the important thing is to, ne to never to forget what is the main mission of, the, of each, let's say, partner. Uh, we as private company, we need to sell the product, we need to, 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 to win on the market, while uh, researchers have to act as a researcher. They, are not, uh, not, they don't need to be focused on the market. Together, we can then uh, work as a, as, a, as a kind of uh, cooperation uh, successful for both parties. That's uh, that is all for now for by me. Martin, thank you, thank you for this presentation. Yeah, uh, I see. Really, um, this is a nice example of how those uh, two two entities, like research and development, and uh, let's say more commercial company, are uh, working together for a longer period, not just uh, on on one project but on a longer period to, to really um, help each other, you know. And uh, obviously the GI systems are, let's say, in, in important to be, to be present in all the, all, the, all the areas more and more. Uh, the question is, uh, do you see, maybe you can, you can mention one of the uh, nice references you, you did uh, together. So maybe some, some case, uh, which you would point out that uh, changed the, the the world for a better, or you know. Well, as I said, the, the, the <laughs> we are using, let's say, the, the, those guys uh, uh, very, very, very often in our, in our let's say products uh, we are developing for for our customers, uh, and uh, uh, the the guys from from this uh, laboratory they are like you know help button for us whenever we, we don't let's say we don't have time to solve some problems uh, they, 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 we all, we ask the guys hey this is our problem how can you solve it do you know the solutions and in 90 percent they know the solutions uh, we just have to use this and then implement of course and uh, yes we have done this many times in uh, in catastrophe system in slovenia in croatia and now in serbia very well uh, we are very in the way to, to develop there so many times uh, they help us in in everyday in everyday solutions uh, not to mention of course the the, the things that mr uh, dr doman has explained uh, uh, in smart agriculture so smart cities and so on where we we have to look to a new a new components and, and combine GIS with other things, with, with IOTs, uh, machine learning, and so on. So there are very uh, this is uh, uh, there are topics we cannot follow everything. We are a small company. We cannot have a, a so wide range of knowledge, and uh, so we need to to have this uh, um, let's say deep experience uh, and also possibility to play with so so different solutions, and we can use this in our let's say products. Super. Yeah. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. Uh, I think uh, we have the last speaker today. It's uh, Luka Banovic from IRNAS. So, Luka, do we Hello. have each other? Hello. Thank you, Yuli, for uh, the introduction. Um, let, me, let me jump on to my presentation. Uh, there we go. Hope should, hopefully, you should see that. Um, Thank you everyone for your uh, for your talks and it's exciting to see that uh, this kind of data driven companies and data driven development is so big and so well supported here locally um, but it's not it's not um, unexpected to say that uh, with uh, with this digital transformation being on the rise uh, there has also been a rise in the IOT sector to or the rise in demand rather uh, to 
to start collecting data in the places where this has not been possible before. Uh, so let me start my part of, uh, of today with a bit of a challenge. Uh, whether you think it's possible to make an IoT device to outlive a deep sea turtle. And uh, let me break the challenge to you straight away. Um, the answer is yes, because it would be a bummer if the answer was no. Um, and I have it right here. It's a piece of hardware that's been developed uh, and manufactured here in, uh, at IONAS in Maribor, which uh, is a company that focuses on development of custom technological IoT solutions for challenging environments. Um, but let me let me jump into uh, into the into into the part of giving you a glimpse of what actually makes the environments challenging and a kind of brief how at the end of the presentation to uh, to tell you how we how we do it. Um, okay, so. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see some of the environments where uh, we've deployed our solutions in the past. Uh, there is really a small, a small part of them, um, but each of them represents a specific set of challenges that uh, we have to deal with. Uh, and on the left hand side, you can see some of the parameters that we have to consider in every deployment. Uh, so if we go by cases, on, the first one is a monitoring and tracking device for deep sea turtles um, placed in the Sao Tome and the Principe Islands, working with nature conservation organizations. Following, following the, same, uh, the same kind of track, at the bottom you can see an open collar project, which is, which is an elephant tracking uh, device mounted successfully on a set of uh, endangered elephants uh, that move around very remote deserts. Um, in Africa and other places. On the right, on the right hand side, we are present. I'm presenting more of an industrial part of the part of the work we do, uh, which is um, providing solutions for infrastructure monitoring and preventive maintenance, such as tunnels or electrical grid um, electrical gr uh, grid maintenance systems. Each of these cases is specific in terms of uh, the connectivity that's locally available, the size of the solution you can you can deploy. Um, whether it has to be airtight or watertight, it has some power limitations. You have to carefully consider the, the battery lifetime. Uh, of course, one of the more important ones is that uh, all of this infrastructure or devices, once deployed, uh, we have very limited access to them. They have to withstand extreme uh, temperatures or physical impact in certain cases. Um, which uh, which is uh, which is always which is always you know not not very not very critical in the environments we are used in which when we have uh, you know all the infrastructure available all the connectivity all the power supply um, everything is there to be used but once we move into the desert or out to the sea or into the tunnel already uh, there are things that we need that make make actually the hardware design much more challenging. Um, and we focus. We if if I break if I break down the the concept or the approach of how we do it. For example, the first the first part is uh, excuse me. The first part is that that we've encountered is that the early integration adaptation of all latest technology is absolutely key. Uh, the solutions like that are placed to the areas where you don't want to go. Uh, every year, or you want to be clever with the data you collect and not deal with the hardware itself that collects the data for you. So if we want to have a device withstand uh, the next 10 or 20 or even more years, uh, we have to be able to integrate and adapt the latest uh, and more, most uh, kind of most on edge um, technology that's out there. The second part is uh, in, uh, establishing the testing automation and remote device management systems. Uh, if I use, let's say, I use maybe the least obvious of the examples of the, from the previous slide, um, let's say a tunnel infrastructure, which is, it's not remotely placed, but there's, it has an, an immensely high human intervention costs. A 15 minute closure of a tunnel costs about 900 euros. Uh, so if you have a fleet of devices de deployed in a tunnel, you can only imagine how how the um, uh, how the how the prices would would go up if you had to go out go out there uh, in person and do any operation on device 
on, on site. So one of the key areas to focus on in, in the work we do is to establish systems that allow us to remotely uh, configure, upgrade, maintain, uh, and manage devices so that we can so that we can reduce these costs to the, to a minimum. Uh, and last but definitely not least, if we want a device to be uh, useful for the next 20 years uh, with a single battery charge, which is completely possible nowadays, uh, there there is a certain uh, considerate amount of investment that needs to be done in the power management optimization and the testing uh, before before these devices go out and uh, and uh, and are deployed. Uh, hopefully, I'm not out of time. So thank that's all for me. Thank you for thank you for listening. And if you want to, if if you're interested in any uh, in any more details and many more extensive use cases and projects we do, uh, please reach out to us uh, or to me. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions should there be uh, should there be any. Thank you. Luca, thank you very much. Uh, amazing. So uh, the clear example how the the IoT platform could be used to 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 in in the concrete example of the putting in on the turtles back. Uh, so I was uh, surprised. So basically the the, the batteries uh, now they could really last so long. So because I was questioning myself um, how you will be chasing the, the turtles around to to get it removed and uh, you know so basically this is not the obstacle you would say. Well, it depends on the, it depends on the use uh, for that. If we if if uh, if I you know go to into the concrete example of turtles, there is uh, uh, there is there is there's two modes and two devices that are basically being used, and none of them has um, has an integrated life a battery a lifetime of 20 years because it doesn't need to. Um, it has to have uh, about a year uh, of battery lifetime, which is completely manageable. Uh, but in some cases, like electrical grid infrastructure, uh, yes, or any kind of uh, embedded sensors in any infrastructure. That is that is com that is required and completely possible at this point in time to do. Obviously, you have always size limitations and uh, um, good uh, good control over, over what the device does at what time, uh, when is it awake, when is it at standby, when is it in sleep, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but yes, in, in certain in certain cases, it's definitely possible. Uh, but the concrete uh, turtle, uh, the concrete turtle example, no. Uh -huh. How did you get get involved with that with that case? So, so by, by, by we yourself? Have a, yeah. at Irnas we have a fairly long uh, tradition of working on nature conservation IoT. Uh, we were approached by nature conservation agencies that basically required pieces of hardware to deploy on animal species or at uh, at fixed locations out in the let's say in the jungle at the open sea or at the you know Saharan Africa where there's or Antarctica uh, for example where there is literally nothing to go by uh, you have satellite connectivity at best um, and uh, and not much more um, so after after one case uh, there is there was just a, a mesh of these um, nature conservation agencies behind uh, and you know they, they know each other uh, and we, we could we, we could extend the pool of, of collaborations like that quite easily and it's been successful for the past five years so hopefully it goes on but this is only not uh, I think it's worth mentioning this is only one of the sectors we cover um, we are very strong in the industrial IOT as well uh, and other play uh, and other things but uh, it's me it's mostly when talking to uh, when talking to people it's mostly the easiest and mo most vivid to uh, explain the concept on the nature conservation examples. Great, super. So um, with that, I think we have concluded um, the, all the all the speakers for now. So I would give the word to Marian back. And thank you, Luca. Uh, dear all, thank you for uh, presentation, uh, speakers. It was very interesting also your explanation to questions of our moderator Yuli. Now we have uh, still some time for a debate so uh, please uh, ask the question for our speakers and uh, 
we have approximately uh, eight minutes, but we can prolong if the debate is interesting because we are not uh, limited with the time frame. So please, Yuri, continue. Yeah, um, Mario, Yuri. do we have any questions or Matei from the, uh, from the public? Uh, no, I don't see uh, any question here in chat. All of the questions have been answered during the session in the chat. During the session in chat, yeah. yeah so okay. maybe if somebody from the audience has a question, you can unmute yourself, uh, turn your camera on and just ask out loud. Okay, uh, no more questions. So, okay, let, uh, let us uh, a little bit of summarize and I have some, some questions. So we have heard really uh, amazing uh, things, uh, amazing cases, how, how the, the IoT and how the technology is used and how we are participating in, uh, let's say, um, di different uh, tenders of like Horizon and, and so on and collaboration between uh, the companies. Uh, we heard from uh, Muhammad also that uh, how he sees that, okay, there is a great knowledge in, in this layer of, let's say, university um, people and so on, but lack of uh, government uh, support uh, on, on, on those topics. Uh, how, how maybe some of you or uh, let's say who, who could mention, how do you see that? So basically what, what we could do in, in Slovenia that, that we would be uh, putting those ecosystems together of um, collaborating in the different segments of uh, let's say technology from digital transformation, which Matthias mentioned, uh, uh, IoT cases, uh, 5G and uh, to, to, to really position Slovenia better in the world. So what would that, that would become our competitive advantage in, in, in that field? Uh, do you think uh, that this is possible or, and uh, where, where do you see the main obstacle? Is it true that uh, as uh, Mohamed said, uh, it's just the government or, or it's something else? So uh, if any of you would, would comment on that. So basically what to do in order to be, to be better, you know, to collaborate and to, to, to position ourselves as a Slovenia, as a country who has really, um, let's say, heavy researchers and a lot of knowledge to sell this knowledge uh, outside our, our uh, country. So Matthias, maybe you would uh, uh, step in here. What, what's your thought on that? Well, um, I believe that um, <clears throat> that in Slovenia we have a lot of knowledge. This is this is definitely the fact, and we are also good at selling this knowledge to to some foreign companies, research institutes, universities, and so on. Uh, I don't think this is the main problem. Where where I see the the, the problem, or maybe a little bit of of. Uh, lack of, of uh, expertise is how to apply this knowledge with Slovenian uh, companies and uh, Slovenian economy. And uh, there are probably several reasons why, why, why Slovenian companies are sometimes not as effective and as efficient as some foreign companies, although uh, I don't want to, to sound pessimistic. We, we, we do have some really uh, successful Slovenian companies and I think we have more and more of those and they are setting examples how to uh, apply modern technologies, uh, how to develop new business models, how to do digital business and so on. And well, um, um, the fact is that uh, that with large companies and particularly those who are also uh, partially state-owned, 
uh, all transformations and all implementations of new technologies are difficult because this requires some tough decisions and those decisions can have some consequences and then you know uh, you really have to have a good backup in order to take some those decisions but with startups and uh, and uh, new new companies this, this is much easier in my opinion yeah i would uh, definitely agree with you so yeah uh, you are saying more uh, uh, the company should be more open and okay government owned of course we know the the, the challenges uh, sometimes lack of uh, foreign in, in investment into it so but basically you know companies to be more brave to to do to do this step forward to not to be afraid to fall and uh, to do some mistakes which which are uh, uh, acceptable when when you are doing uh, stepping in this digital transformation and uh, enforcing that what what the startups have in their nature uh, like uh, being more uh, agile, uh, provocative, uh, there to 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 do some uh, steps forward. Uh, yeah. So uh, one uh, one uh, how how I see it from the maybe Oracle perspective, and it's uh, what what we are doing. It's really you know try to combine this uh, uh, collaboration between the enterprise clients, which. Are Customers are um, uh, enterprise clients that they start collaborating with uh, with with uh, other companies in our partner ecosystem, for example, and that we provide some technology, and then we brainstorm with with those customers about okay, what what you can do next, not just okay, what what Oracle has to offer to you, but okay, let's see what our partners all together can offer to you, and uh, what are your challenges, and what are you doing, and then. You change the conversation from okay being the provider to those companies or selling them something uh, more in the way like uh, strategic partnership and looking for a for a new ideas and I find out that a lot of companies are are willing to to do so uh, and uh, we are doing so so um, yeah definitely you know we we need to let's say in 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 position when we can do that from maybe our position like Oracle, uh, we, we need to enforce that, you know, that we connect you guys uh, in the in the projects with the with the companies which uh, need need it, you know. So that's why I'm, I'm I'm so happy to to be today here and to to hear all these nice stories and maybe we will uh, help some of you guys to 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 make some business somewhere, you know, because the most important is I think that. It, it not just ends at the research and development, and but but that actually we move forward and we make that uh, solutions live and get money out of it at the end of the day. So uh, I think you are all doing um, a great job, and uh, you know we uh, we need to encourage that collaboration and uh, make some. Uh, business out of it at the end of the day so yeah uh, yeah uh, any other comments any other uh, thoughts on uh, on today's discussion yeah maybe if i jump in a little bit i have to say i agree with everything that you've, you've said so far and i think what's from my perspective really important is that we actually lack we lack courage so we're not courageous enough and I think in Slovenia, we still have this issue with not being comfortable with failing ever. Yeah. And we're playing it safe as a consequence. So this is something that, that sort of is holding us back to some mm. extent. I have to say that in the past 10 years, this has been sort of overcome with small companies, with startups, because the mentality there is different. But large companies, universities, we, we, we continue to play to safe. And... Um, which is a pity because um, if you look at our numbers and people who are really recognized, uh, especially, I don't know, in, in, in Europe, in globally, um, we are better than we usually think of ourselves. And um, well, it makes me kind of sad that you, you first have to prove yourself, um, I don't know, in Germany, in the UK, in the States, and then, then you have you know, the credentials to, to say, okay, I know what I'm doing and, and, and I'm good at that. 
I think we, if, if we were a little bit more confident, um, we would be, you know, getting much farther. But I think, I mean, putting all those challenges aside, I, th I still think that in the past 10 years, we've seen a lot. So uh, there's a lot of European projects. There's a lot of cooperation between Slovenian companies. And I think we are getting somewhere, slowly but surely, I think. So, um, yeah, the prospects, I think, are, are okay for us. Thank you, Moita. Amazing, yeah. So dare to dare to fail um, and yeah, and um, use all our knowledge and to be more uh, uh, more willing to, to to take some risks uh, in, in into that. So yeah, we, we have we have companies who are teaching that. Matei would know uh, how how to be more you know more uh, uh, agile and more uh, willing to to take those risks. Uh, in the in the future so uh, okay um with that uh, i would really like to thank you once again uh, to be a great guest today uh for this participation uh i think it was uh, amazing discussion a lot of new things and uh, uh marian back to you yes thank you Uh, so thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we came to the end. Uh, we are uh, out of time, but we can continue uh, the discussion in Huva. The Huva event platform enable uh, you to meet the speakers, other attendees and organizers, uh, chat, create discussion topics, meetups, share articles and more. Uh, there is a link in the chat box which will guide you on how to download the app if you haven't done uh, so already. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this event. Uh, your opinion matters to us, so please give us your feedback. Um, join us at our next event, Sustainable Future, on 19 November, the Google workshop for students on uh, 24th of November and the closing panel Future Society on the 24th of November. Uh, find the information about the Unimind's event and sessions on the event website. You can find the link in the chat box. Take care, keep an open mind, and see you at our next event. Thank you and bye.